still and know. A Course in Christian Meditation by Edward L. Schultz. Session 1. What is Meditation? Perhaps one of the best ways to define meditation is to call it a form of listening prayer. American Christians are good at telling God what to do, but not very good at listening to what God has to say to them. This is the purpose of meditation, to listen to God, to be still and know that God is God. Meditation may be said to have four dimensions, all of which are interrelated, spiritual, practical, active, and passive. Spiritual meditation is that which is used for religious purposes. Practical meditation is that which is used primarily for problem solving, relaxation, stress reduction, etc. Active meditation makes use of creative imagination. Passive meditation involves being still and calming the mind, perhaps even emptying it. As a discipline, meditation opens our awareness to the world around us, to other people, and to God. Although for some, meditation is a way of shutting out their world, its primary purpose for the Christian community is to build a deeper relationship with God, and in doing so, we must also build a deeper relationship with others. There is quite a contrast between Eastern meditation as expressed, for example, in Transcendental Meditation, or TM, and Christian Meditation. Eastern Meditation is based on the theological premise that God is a form of cosmic consciousness, not a personal being. Each human being is seen as a tiny fragment of that universal mind. Therefore, the object in Eastern Meditation is to become absorbed in that mind. Thus one is saved. Meditation allows the individual to completely eliminate the idea of self and become absorbed in the one. Individual personality is a hindrance to spiritual growth. Christian meditation is done in the context of the belief that God is a personal being. God is the creator of the world and of all that is in it. Thus, we are children of the divine parent, we are not a part of that parent any more than you and I are part of our earthly parents, but we are created in the image of that parent, those parents. Therefore, individual personality matters a great deal. The object of Christian meditation is to have communion with God and to deepen our relationship. Meditation builds the milieu for a loving relationship. In order for meditation to make sense, it may be necessary to consider the following theory of communication. The Four Levels of Communication If two people, Mary and Joe, want to communicate with one another, they generally do so by means of the five physical senses of sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. Mary waves to Joe, and he sees her. Joe says hello to Mary, and she hears him. Mary slaps Joe when he tries to kiss her, and he feels her. In each of these cases, physical senses have been used to communicate. Thus, the first level of communication is physical communication. From time to time, Mary and Joe seem to be able to communicate without the direct use of their physical senses. For example, Mary senses that something is wrong with Joe at work. She cannot see or hear him, but she knows. This has sometimes been referred to as extrasensory perception, or ESP. Thus, the second level of communication is psychical communication. Mary and Joe decide that there must be a creator of the universe, a god, they would like to communicate with this God. They try the first level of communication. However, 
they discover that they cannot see, hear, touch, smell, or taste God. What could they conclude from this failed communication? Is there no God? Or is there a different means of communicating with God than by the physical senses? Perhaps the psychical means would work. With only their minds, Joe and Mary try to communicate with God. In other words, they pray. For in prayer, we do not really believe that the vibrations of our vocal cords stimulate God's eardrums. Rather, we believe that God knows the thoughts of our minds and hearts. In other words, God reads our minds. Because this type of communication is qualitatively different from the usual type of psychical communication, we call it something different. Thus, the third level of communication is spiritual communication. The three levels of communication listed thus far all involve human beings taking the initiative. There are times throughout the history of the church when God seems to have communicated directly with human beings. These have often been described as indescribable events, sometimes called mystical experiences. They are direct experiences of God and are found within the fourth level of communication known as mystical communication. These four dimensions of communication are not always separate and distinct. They are separated here for purposes of function only. Why meditate? Meditation can be an important and integral part of a person's spiritual life because it is an intentional time during which one is open to communion and communication with God. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. The practice of meditation can serve to strengthen our belief, to help us move from believing there is a God to knowing there is a God. If we have never spoken to a particular human being, then we can never say that we have truly known that person. The same is true with God. Prayer alone is a one-way street. We speak to God. Meditation allows us to listen to God, thus making it two-way communication. The Reverend Sam Shoemaker once wrote, Prayer is not meant to change the mind of God, but to find it. How do we meditate? The meditation process begins simply enough with relaxation. It's difficult for one to meditate if one is caught up in the hustle and bustle of the world. A calming and relaxing of the body and mind are prerequisites to meaningful meditation. A relaxation exercise may be helpful. Mentally traveling down the body from head to foot, suggesting to each major part that it is relaxed and at peace. This is often referred to as progressive relaxation. To meditate on your own, you must first decide if your meditation is intended to be active, passive, spiritual, or practical. For practical meditation, it may only be necessary to relax and remain at peace for 10 to 15 minutes. This will calm the body and mind and lower blood pressure. For spiritual meditation, it may only be necessary to relax and be aware of God's presence for a short period of time. Meditation was once referred to as wasting time with Jesus. More formal techniques of meditation will be explored in the sessions ahead. For the moment, it is suggested that you simply spend 10 to 15 minutes in silent meditation. Meditation exercise number one. The guided meditation at the end of this session centers around building a closer harmony with God's universe. You will be asked to select an object such as a leaf, a piece of fruit, a blade of grass, etc. Animate objects are preferred in this meditation. You will then experience the object with all of your five physical senses, sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. During the guided meditation, you will be asked to recall those physical sensations using your imagination. Then, 
you will project yourself into the object and become aware of it from the inside out. While there, you will be asked to consider your relationship to this other part of God's creation. Perhaps you have never considered the fact that every created part of the universe is related to you, because you and it were created by the same God. Perhaps, after considering your relationship with this animate object, you will view other such objects differently in the future. Before beginning this guided meditation, please pick up the object that you've chosen and begin to experience it with your five physical senses. Look at it. What color is it? What shape is it? Pick it up and feel it. Is it soft? Is it smooth? Is it hard? Is it prickly? Now turn it over in your hand. As you touch it, move it around. What does it sound like? Now smell the object. Is it sweet and savory? Is it bitter? Now if you choose, taste the object. Taste the object with your tongue or put a small piece of it in your mouth. Is it sweet? Is it sour? Is it bitter? Remember these physical sensations. Now place the object down on the table. Please do not listen to this meditation while driving. You will need to have your eyes closed. Assume a comfortable position and close your eyes. Take a deep breath and relax. As into God's hands you commend your spirit. Allow the Spirit of God to touch you, bringing you perfect peace the peace of God that passes all understanding. God touches your head and a warm feeling of peace and relaxation begins to flow throughout your scalp and forehead, relaxing every muscle and fiber. Allow the peace of God to spread throughout the muscles and fibers of your face and jaw bringing them relaxation, calm, and peace. The peace of God continues to flow down through your neck and throat, bringing them calm and peace, relaxing every cell and fiber of your neck and throat. This feeling of relaxation flows downward through your shoulders, arms, wrists, hands and fingers, releasing all tensions and anxieties, bringing perfect calm, peace and relaxation. You continue to allow God's peace to flow through your back and chest, bringing with it a warm feeling of relaxation every muscle, joint and fiber of your back and chest is relaxed and at peace. Every internal organ functions harmoniously, bringing health and well-being to every cell and fiber of your body. The peace of God flows now through your hips, relaxing every muscle, joint and fiber. This warm feeling of relaxation flows now through your legs, into your knees, ankles, feet, bringing perfect calm, peace, and relaxation. 
there are no tensions or pressures in any of the muscles, joints, and fibers of your physical body. You are at peace. You are in God's hands. Now that your body is relaxed, you may set aside the cares and concerns of the physical world and begin to enter the inner world of the mind and spirit, where you may be still in the presence of God. As you continue to be relaxed and calm, I'm going to ask you to begin to use your God-given ability of creative imagination. Imagine now that the object you experienced just a few moments ago with your physical senses is now in your hand. See it with your mind's eye. Recall how it looked. In a few moments, I will be silent for a short period of time. During that time, I would like you to bring to mind all of the sensations that you experienced when you physically perceived that object. Remember its color, texture, odor. Was it bright or dark? Warm or cold? Recall as many of those physical sensations as you can. Now that you have experienced the object using your creative imagination, see yourself inside the object. Imagine what it must be like to see it from the inside out. Imagine that you are standing or sitting inside that object. Now once again, re-experience the physical sensations of the object. Is it light or dark inside? Are you warm or cold? Spend a few moments in silence, becoming aware of your impressions. Now I would like you to consider the following. You are a part of God's creation, created by the loving hands of God. This object that you have just experienced is also a part of God's creation, created by the loving hands of God. This means that you are both related. You are both parts of God's creation, created by the loving hands of God. How do you now feel about this object? Take a moment to contemplate your relationship. You may now leave this object. Imagine that it is back in your hand. And now imagine that you place that object on the table. Remember the experiences that you have just had. These experiences will help you to understand similar experiences in the future. You may now leave the inner spiritual world at your own pace and is as comfortable to you, you may return to the outer physical world, the world as you know it.